It's September 1652, and the law has finally caught up with English highway robber James Hind. In moments, he will be hanged, drawn and quartered, a traitor's death. This early tabloid superstar is the most famous criminal of his day. But robbery, no matter how audacious, is not treason. So what did James Hind do in order to die as a traitor? Is it possible the manner of his death was ordered by England's king killer, Oliver Cromwell? Now do as I command! James Hind lived in turbulent times. He was in his mid-twenties when civil war tore England apart. Parliamentary roundheads and royalist cavaliers fought a series of bloody battles. King Charles I was executed, yet war rumbled on. But the Civil War period also saw the birth of the modern English newspaper, and James Hines' outrageous crimes made him a tabloid celebrity. So how is it then that James Hind died a traitor's death? Well, I want to find out more about his crimes, just in case that helps solve this puzzle. The punishment for prolific highwaymen was to be hanged like a common thief. To get the scoop on what made Hind so special, I've arranged to meet Professor James Sharp at this printing press. One of the things people like reading about then as now is crime. Yeah, crime sells. So what were they saying about Hind? Well, he's portrayed as uh, a sort of Robin Hood figure. He robs the rich rather than the poor. Uh, he uses violence very sparingly. And the peculiar twist on him is that he robs parliamentarians rather than royalists. The public must have lapped up these stories. A criminal avenging the death of a king by humiliating those responsible. So it seems Hind was more than just a common thief. He was something of a celebrity, a tabloid darling for the cavalier cause. But I do have two problems with that. First of all, as we all know, you can't believe everything you read in the newspapers. And secondly, even if it was all true, it doesn't really add up to treason. There has to be more to why Hind died as a traitor. And I've managed to find one story, printed after his death, which could explain everything. It suggests that he made a personal enemy of the most famous parliamentarian of all time, Oliver Cromwell. As a key figure in the Civil War, Cromwell was enormously powerful. He'd go on to become Lord Protector of England. But legend has it, that ever since one fateful encounter, he'd held a personal grudge against James Hind. The story goes that one day, Oliver Cromwell was traveling between London and his house near Cambridge. But even for the most important man in England, the open road was full of perils. For lying in wait was none other than the great royalist avenger, James Hind. He planned to ambush Cromwell and capture his greatest prize yet. When the moment came to attack, Hind suddenly realised that they were massively outnumbered by Cromwell's entourage. But when he had a chance to escape, he took it. It's said Hind only escaped capture by riding his horse to death. This line smacks to me of another tall tabloid tale. This version of events would explain a thing or two, but I'm wondering just how much it can be trusted. If this story is true, then was Hines' execution Cromwell's revenge? On Powick Bridge, where the civil war that made Cromwell began and ended, I've arranged to meet Dr. Alan Marshall. Hi, how do you do? Very nice to meet you. He believes this story is folklore fantasy. It comes out 40 or 50 years after the events it describes, and Cromwell is also part of the, the mythology of, of these type of tales and stories. Do you think there's any reason to suspect that Cromwell might have had a grudge against Hind? 
There are other elements to the, the story of Hind and Cromwell which may be more suggestive. I mean, for example, Cromwell was the military commander. And here at Worcester, fights the last battle of the Civil War with great success. Hind, however, was on the other side. On this spot in 1651, the exiled King Charles II tried and failed to seize back his throne. According to Allen, Hind fought alongside him, so he was more than a common thief. And actually, when Hind was arrested, it was not for highway robbery, but for fighting alongside the king. But would you think a traitor's death would be the normal punishment for someone who served as a soldier in the war? For an aristocrat, an officer who had fought in the Royal Army, yes. But for somebody such as Hind, he was basically a corporal, he was an ordinary soldier, it's highly unlikely. It doesn't really stack up to a traitor's death, does it? Well, I agree. There, there, there are problems with it, and it is, in the end, a bit of a mystery for you. With all the tabloid hype surrounding James Hind, it's difficult to separate fact from fiction. We can be sure he was arrested in November 1651 for fighting with the Royalists at Worcester. But up until that point, all the world knew about him was newspaper gossip. So once captured, what did he have to say for himself? When word got out the famous highwayman was behind bars, tabloid journalists wanted the inside story. Gentlemen, welcome. And the articles that they wrote are fascinating. They are kind of juicy underworld exposés that have made great reading. But historically, what's so important about them is that these would have been written by people who met him. You've come to hear my story, have you? Hind might have been arrested for fighting with the king, <laughs> but it was his legendary exploits as a highwayman that fascinated the press. One visitor to his cell wanted to know if he'd seen the famous stories written about him. He, Hind, answered yes and said upon the word of a Christian, they were fictions. But some merry pranks and revels have I played. It was my constant custom to ask, who was he for? If he answered for the king, I gave him 20 shillings. But if he answered for the parliament, I left him as I found him. So although he plays down his crimes of robbery, Hind seems perfectly happy to tell the world that he's a royalist. So it's almost as though he doesn't realise the charge he's been brought forward on. If you were his lawyer at this point, you'd be saying, shut up, you are talking yourself into trouble. Joe thinks that's case closed, but I'm not convinced. I don't believe he was stupid in talking to the papers. I think this royalist rogue had a game plan. I think that James Hind knew that more prominent royalists than he had walked free. I think he thought it was safer to risk justice as a royalist than as a highwayman. It was a gamble, and he staked his life on it. To find out why he lost the bet, I've returned to Worcester, where his luck first turned. Hind was arrested after the decisive battle here, unlike Charles II, who somehow evaded capture. Dr. Gillian Spraggs has offered to explain why one rumor in particular meant the odds were stacked against Hind. There were stories from, in the weeks after the Battle of Worcester, that Hind was the person who had helped Charles II escape from the field and had guided him to safety. That's quite a large claim. It is quite a large claim. It was quite dangerous for Hind. So how did the establishment learn of these rumours? There were stories in the press. So they read it in the papers? That's what it amounted to, yes. Hind denied the story, but his tabloid legend had taken on a life of its own. The public must have loved it, even if it proved to be pure fiction. After the Restoration, Charles told the story many times. Who helped him, where he went, where he hid, and Hind's name was never mentioned. It seems Hind's gamble had failed because he wasn't in control of his public image. 
The papers printed what they liked, and I think the authorities believed what was convenient. He was a figure of defiance, a figure of resistance. They needed to dispose of him. I don't think it was fair. I think you could even call it judicial murder. Whether it was Cromwell or someone else who gave the order, James Hind paid the ultimate price for professing his loyalty to the king. On the 24th of September, 1652, James Hind died a horrible death here in Worcester. His last words were, God bless the, the king. king.